record it right now. Thank you for reminding me. Um, so command dot uh, for the shortcuts uh, that remove the all of the noise. You know, we are UX people and we don't like cognitive load and our users don't like cognitive load. So having a clear canvas can be helpful when we want to present stuff or when we want to work on stuff without extra noise. Um, and let's move to the efficient stuff. So R, just for you to know, um, it's th the shortcuts are very, very intuitive when you use Figma. Means R is for rectangle, okay? R is for rectangle. So if I would like to create a rectangle right now, okay? Oh, talking about noises. All right. So R for rectangle, and then you could draw a shape. Okay, you can draw whatever shape that you'd like with R. If you will press shift, it will make sure that it will keep the ratio as you grow. So R to create rectangle and shift if you would like to create it and maintaining the ratio. Um, I will also mention the PC shortcuts. It's the same so far. Whatever, whenever I say command for, for Mac, it will be control for PC, just for you to know. So R, like that. Um, moving forward. So FYI, most of the internet is based on shapes and pictures and texts. That's about it. So it's really important to know how to create shapes like rectangles and ovals, to know how to work with pictures and so on, and to work how, to know how to work with text. And Laura is asking, so is that control shift R to keep the ratio? No. Basically, R is to create the rectangle, no matter what. But now I don't press anything, okay? I'm hands free. And now if I press shift while I'm creating the rectangle, now it will maintain the shape, all right? And it works the same with everything, with frames, with ovals with pictures everything so shift while press while changing dimension of anything will keep the same dimensions basically and so that's more or less about it the next shortcut would be creating an oval by the way i am going to ask you uh, questions and so please remember these specific shortcuts i know it's hard to mesmerize but i will ask you try to think about the intuitiveness of it. So it's R for rectangle, O for oval, right? So now I'm going to create an oval and O for oval, and then you can create it. And if I press shift while creating it, it will maintain the ratio. Very, very, very useful uh, shortcuts. Okay. So that's about that. And you might get a link to the Figma file. I'm not sure. Let me think about it because it's, I have also stuff that is personal here, like the designs and graphics of the X-Rating Hub. Um, okay. So another thing, that, another shortcut that I use that all the time is the Command R or Control R for PC. And that's basically helped me to rename everything. Let me give you an example. Right here on the left, we have everything. We have the ovals, we have frames, we have all of the things that are in our screen. And the naming convention of a design is extremely important, especially when you hand your design over to developers. So using Command R or Control R will help you to quickly rename every component, a frame, a group, a shape and a, even a component. So command R, by the way, feel free to add me also on LinkedIn. I don't want to miss the party, everyone. So command R and now uh, I can call it whatever I want. I can call it round one. All right, so that's more or less about it. I really don't like the color because nobody can see it. So that's about it. So you can rename it command R and you can rename it. So that's more or less about that. And 
if you're using Mac, command R. If you're using PC, control R. If that doesn't work for you, I'm not sure what's the solution, but I will say that if you will press here in the resources and then keyboard shortcuts, you could see all of the different shortcuts. And there is also a shortcut for that. So an amazing thing about Figma is that you could see the shortcut, whatever it is. So for me, it's shift control question mark. And that's about it. And I can just uh, bring it up and bring it down wherever I want and use it. All right. So control shift question mark. And for your vision of Figma, you could see here the shortcuts, extremely useful. And amazing. I love the networking aspect here. This is amazing, y'all. And awesome job. Okay, moving forward. Now we want to group stuff. Um, and also think about how intuitive it is. So it's command R to rename, command G to group, right? Why do we need to group stuff, basically? Can anyone tell me? Why should I group elements? For auto layout to move them, easier to manage them as a group, to duplicate, you can move all at once. So the best thing to do is just to move, the best, the best reason to do grouping is to move everything at once. Uh, so I'm, uh, I have two rectangles right now, command R, I will call it to rename it, and that will be one, command R to rename it, that will be number two. I don't like the color, so I will pick both of them and use the eyedropper tool to sample color from a different place. And you use, and can can anyone guess what will be the shortcut for the eyedropper tool? Eye dropper tool. What will be the shortcut for the eyedropper tool? The letter I. I, perfect. So if you press I, you can sample color I for the eyedropper tool. It's not control I, it's not command I, it's just I or control C, okay? You can use it for uh, control C or I, that's about it. Uh, and I use it all the time, high dropper tool, pick it, bam, or bam. Another tip that I can give you, uh, another tip that I could give you, if you're working right now on a color palette. So I'm using this, hold on, this amazing tool, named color hunt okay and if i'm looking for a palette of colors for my ui design i just take a color palette from color hunt i'm sure by the way that there are many many different figma plugins that could offer the same thing i just really like this one and the way that i do it is pretty simple so i take a screenshot i do command control shift four on a mac i take all of the colors and then i just paste it right here. Now that I have the color here, what I do, hold on, let's close those. What I do is just to create samples of all of the different colors. And now I have a UI color palette that I can use. So I use it like that and you can also save it. So you save it like that, you go to fill, save and then plus and you can call it four and let's go here plus let's call it three here plus um two one plus one and there you have it now wherever i go i could just go to every element fill and I'll go to local colors and it's going to be here, saved and just use my color palette. So and that's more or less uh, what I do. And that's my hack. Okay, so hold on, let me take a zip. I hope everyone have a drink. This is an, a Figma Happy Hour. I have a coffee this time, but it is a Figma Happy Hour. So cheers. Amazing. So why shall we group elements? Let's say that we have 
these four boxes. And Katie, the shortcut for the the, uh, the shortcut for the shortcuts is Control Shift question mark. Or you could just go here down below and pick the shortcuts and it will be here as well. Cheers, everyone. And I'm using the Figma app and not the website, by the way, at this point. And so just know that I use the app right now, but the same, it works the same uh, when it comes to uh, the website. So now I can pick all of these components, the boxes and so on, and I will press Command G. Now that I pressed Command G, I can move them together whenever and whenever I click them. All right, let's move here. Hold on. So whenever I click them, they move together. But what if I want to pick only this nice purple? So one thing you can do is to do double click. One, two. So I double click. But if you have a lot of components with a lot of groups inside of a lot of frames, you will find yourself doing a lot of double click, double click, double click, double click. So one of the most useful shortcuts that I use is deep select. What is deep select? So whenever I hover a component, I just press, press command. Now I have a deep select. So I don't have to double click down the rabbit hole in order to get it. I could just press command click and that's the deep select and I use it a lot. So know that if you have a group or a frame or even auto layout and you want to pick a specific component inside of it, you need to press command and go deep and that's the deep select and then you can move it around within the group and then it's still within the group. So that's pretty useful. And, and that's about that. There is another shortcut that, that I want to teach you that is very useful. And that would be the, uh, the one that helped me to duplicate fast component. So can anyone remind me what is the shortcut for a, a rectangle, please? R. So I'm pressing R to create a rectangle and I'm pressing Shift to maintain the ratio. Perfect. I'm picking I for the eyedropper tool so I can sample a nicer color. Sorry for the mess. And now let's say that I want to replicate the same component without pressing Command C, Command V, and then move it. I just want to drag this and duplicate it. So what you can do is to press Alt, then you could move it around and duplicate it. Okay, so that's option in Mac or Alt in uh, PC. Again, so option, drag, and there you have it. Now, if you want to keep duplicating this component with the same distances, what you need to do is to press Command D and it will duplicate it forever, the same distance. Means that if it's two one three pixels from it, so it will be two one three pixels from that and two one pixels from that. And by the way, if you want to see the distance between a component to others, just press the option and then you could know what's more or less is the distance between your components and others. And then you could work yourself within a grid system. Okay, in our Figma mastermind class, which is a course that we have at the UX Wedding Hub, I do talk about how to build a grid system, for example, and how to work within a grid system. So if you, for example, have an eight point grid system, so you wanna make sure that the distance is only 40 for some reason. And now I want to maintain that distance. So I just press Command D and everything is 40. All of them are 40 pixels away from each other. It's very useful. And, and it works also in groups. So let's say that this is a group. So you can group it and then you could duplicate the group. And then you wouldn't have to invent the wheel every time. You could just always replicate and reuse and be very efficient uh, about it. Okay, so we have the I for the eyedropper tool and the all drag and so on. Before we move forward, I want to know if you have any questions.
Raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, so the next thing, what was that about equal distance? So Basem, I said about equal distance that uh, if you press command D, I'm creating a rectangle right now, R for rectangle, and then uh, drag, alt drag, or option drag, and then command D, and now all of the distance from each other will be similar, 84 pixels. Okay, I'm pressing options right now to measure the, the, the distance between one component to another. So just option, hover, then you could have it. The shortcut for deep select is just press command. Oh. So I have a group here and I just press command and now hover and it pick it even though it's within a group. So so hover a component that you'd like and then command or control and there you have it. Uh, by the way, new update from Figma, they have a um, typo um, detector. So um, you see they have the typo, this is really new. And now you could collect and uh, correct your typos if you have any, which is new. And that's pretty cool. And definitely a game changer. Love it. So uh, FYI, this is new, hot from the oven from Figma. And, and so eyedropper tool is if you want to sample a color. So let's say that you build a color palette. I'm using the tip select now. I want to make sure that this one is purple. So I for eyedropper tool, tip select here, I for eyedropper tool, and I can still move them around without breaking the package. You can also break the package if you do command shift G. Now it's not grouped anymore, but you can always deep select, modify, and it's still going to be within a group. Uh, is option a button? So in my ignorance, don't have a Mac. So option, I believe what is option for a Mac would be alt for the people that have PC. Uh, the spell check is automatically added. It's a Figma feature. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Many other questions. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, I think we're good. So right now we can, okay, we have some time. So we can talk a little bit, we talked about deep select. Now we can talk a little bit about auto layout. What is auto layout? Anyone can help me out here? So auto layout. Auto layout is a game changer. Uh, if anyone can explain in the, in the chat how auto layout helps them, let me know. And for now, yes, it's like an auto layout responsible layout for the web. And it's pretty good. Amazing. So let's make a button with auto layout. So let's talk about the past. So in the past, if you'd like to create a button, we don't have to have a spec now. So you create a rectangle. Okay. Let's uh, make some round shapes. If you want to have round edges, so you could just go here and have round edges. Probably can see it. So you can have around really round edges or just like give it 10 pixel radius. And now you have round edges. I like my buttons rounded. And so now we're going to use the text tool. Can anyone guess what will be the shortcut for the text tool? Perfect. So T for the text tool, and let's call it a button. Okay. So now let's sample this color. Amazing. And we have this one, but hey, it doesn't look like a button because it's not centered. So I am going to pick both of the components. So I'm going to keep, uh, pick the button component and background. And now I'm going to align them to the middle and horizon and vertical or alignment. So that's how you do it. You go here, 
can also do um, option H or alt H and then here and then you can do option V or alt V uh, okay I'm sure there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of shortcuts in Chromebook about um, option V. Option V is if you would like to create a vertical alignment. So right now I need to centralize the text to the center of this box. So I'll do command V and bam, it's uh, like that. And now what we can do is what we used to do is group them and now uh, uh, command G to group them and command R to rename it. And I will call it a button perfect and that would be my button now there are a few issues with that button for example if i would like to change the microcopy of the button to hey leave me but no the design broke it looks bad i had to do stuff like that i had to fix it and then i had to make sure that you know the, the I'm not breaking the grid system and I needed to align things to each other. So whenever I had to change the copy, I had to, it broke my design basically. You now the people at Figma are brilliant. They have a brilliant design team and they know their users and they really know well when it comes to create digital experiences and, and create awesome products. But if I'm going back to what I've built before, so I created something like that, which is like the beginning of my button. I can do something called auto layout. Auto layout is uh, automatic layout. I just grab both components. The shortcut is shift A, or you could just uh, press plus here. I use shift A and check it out. The layout automatically um, adjusted itself. Now, why it's unique? Because because now when I change the microcopy, like me, my friend, you see how the button is changing? This is amazing. So that's the use of auto layout in button. It works as a, some kind of a frame. I don't recommend using groups that much anymore, but using frames uh, and you can call it a button. And there you have it. That's, that's your, um, your button. That's, keep changing and growing and getting smaller based on the microcopy. And this is very good for us UX writers. Gabriel is, then, is saying, and uh, Karen is asking why frames and not groups? This is a very good question because you have um, a lot more uh, things to do when it comes to layout of components, when it comes to frames. So most of my designs lately looks like a package of frame rather than groups. I mostly use groups when it comes to adjusting uh, images and uh, vectors um, as part of icons or illustrations. So I group those uh, and that's about it because the groups don't maintain your layout, which is a problem. And frames do maintain your layout, which is great. Um, uh, what's the shortcut to undo the auto layout? So what you can do is just to remove the auto layout here. Okay, you can just press here, remove it. Or you can right click and remove auto layout. So we have also a shortcut for that, which is Alt Shift A. So Alt Shift A, and there you have it. Shift A to create it, Alt Shift A to remove it. And... And Levine is saying, saying, can you make it again, please? I missed how to make auto layout. So sure, I will do it, but for a different use case. So that's the use case for a button. I am a button. Oh, it doesn't work because it doesn't have auto layout. Let's grab them together. And now it works, they work, okay? Uh, okay, I will break the auto layout. I will move to the center. 
Hold on. Oh, come on. Now it will work. Or it's not. Okay. I, I did it in a wrong way because I did it inside of a frame. Never mind. Okay. It worked before. Trust me that uh, that's how we do it. If you would like me to do it again, I will do it again. But now what we're going to do is to try to find another use case for auto layout. So um, uh, Erika is asking where is what's the shortcut to undo auto layout. So as I said before, uh, Control Shift A. How to change menus on the right panel? It change. The, the menus change based on the component that you're currently holding. So if you're holding a rectangle, you'll see that. But if you're holding a frame, F for creating frame, you'll see something a bit different. So that's how it changes. By the way, F is the shortcut for creating frames. Uh, what are the arrows right below auto layout in the design menu? Um, I need you to tell me what exactly you're talking about, but hold on. Let's just build another use cases, another use case for the auto layout. So right now we will build, for example, a menu. Okay. So let's say that we're building a menu and now we have a lot of text files like blog and all drag and about us. And contact us. I'm using alt drag to duplicate. Okay, let's distribute them evenly and put them right here. And now we can create auto layout. So uh, shift A, and this is our auto layout. What else that is pretty awesome about auto layout is that you can play around with the components. So let's say that you decided to put the about us before the blog, or let's say that you want to have one more component, like, I don't know, admin. So you can add it and it, the layout will adjust accordingly. So that's pretty good. And so frame, Kavita is asking, when would you create a frame as against the rectangle? So frame would hold my shapes and rectangles. Okay, most of the time when you create a frame, it's where your UI uh, is going to be. So I'm going to press F and now I can pick desktop, phone, tablet. So let's do MacBook Air. And this is a frame and the frame will hold my rectangle. If I will press R and create a rectangle here, it will be under the frame. And now if I will move my frame around, you can see that it's holding my rectangle. And if I will have oval and another rectangle, the frame will hold it, okay? If I will have a header, so it would be a frame within a frame, which will be adjusted, okay, like that. Need to make it centralized. And now it's holding it. Let's change it back around a bit in the text. Okay, so the frame is holding everything. Okay, whatever is on a frame, it holds it. When I put, for example, a rectangle on top of rectangle, they don't hold each other. Okay, that they don't have any relationship between them. Uh, how do I select multiple objects? By the way, write to everyone and not only to host and panelists. In order to select multiple objects, I press one, then shift, and then the other one. And now I picked both of them without grouping them, which is important. Um, you can press control and then shift control and then shift control and shift control. And now you hold a lot of things in the same time. So that's how I do it. Uh, Sarah is asking, did you group the text and frame before adding the auto layout? No, I didn't. You don't have to. That's something that is pretty awesome about auto layout. You don't have to. Um, so that's about us about auto layout. Shift A is the shortcut. Frame inside of frames happens all the time. So for example, what we have here 
is the header, and that's the auto layout frame. By the way, you can play around with the distances and so on. And uh, it's a frame within a frame. When you create UI, you could have a lot of frames within frames within frames. For example, the button that we've created before is also a frame, the auto layout button that I think I deleted. It. So it's also a frame and it will be inside of a different frame in another frame and that's fine. Um, did you group the tag? Okay. Inception, definitely, Monique. That's a frame within a frame, a frame. Inception, okay. So we did talk about the eyedropper tool, the auto layout. Let's talk a little bit about texts, okay. V is saying, I often have multiple screens in Figma that contain the same copy. If I need to edit a copy, it's annoying to update the same copy in multiple places. Is there a way I can update the copy once and it will update all instances? All right, that's a great question. So right now what we can do, we can go to this frame. This is uh, our auto layout. Let's take it aside for a second. The name is frame. I don't like it. Let's press command R to rename it and call it main nav. Okay, that would be the main nav. Now, V is saying question that is very interesting. How can I create a reusable component? So we have an option to do that. We call it components. Main. Yeah. So how do you do that? You go to it and then you create a component out of it. Okay, talking about inception. Now, if you see a full diamond, it means that you have a component. Now you could use it in a lot of different places. So if you go to assets and go to main nav, you could reuse it. You could just, you could just grab it and reuse it, or we can just take it and duplicate it. And that would be fine. Now, um, if you want to structure your design in a smart way, you need to work with components because then whenever you will change the main component, it will impact all of the child component. You have a parent, you have a child. So for example, if you decided to change the about us to about, it will update it. Now, the beautiful thing about auto layout is that if we didn't have auto layout, it wouldn't adjust like that. The design would break and we had to adjust everything from the beginning. But now because this is a component that contains auto layout, it changed everything. Okay. And you can also use find and replace plugin. And to be honest, you don't have to use the plugin anymore because you have it uh, inside of Figma. So you when you can say whatever it says blog. So replace all with replace all with posts. Okay. And for some reason it didn't work. Why? I'm asking. I'm not sure. Yes, so Dito is also another plugin. Okay, so let's say that whatever it says blog. I want you to replace it with posts. Bam, so it worked now. Okay, so that's one way to go. And in case you haven't did it in components. But if you have did it in components, you can just change the master component and it will impact uh, all of them. Now it didn't because, because we can say, we set all changes, amazing. So what you can do uh, with child components is to override text. Why is that? Because let's say that you have button with main text, you can override it with different part, type of text. So let's say that I have a child here, I can call it posts, and here it will be blogs. 
okay? And it didn't impact anything. You can always say, reset all changes and it will go back to normal. Uh, and you can also say something like, hey, I want you to push the changes to main component and then the child component will impact the original component. And that's more or less about that. And, and that's great because if you use this component right now in 100 different screens and you decide to change this color from blue to purple, so now that you change it to purple, it will impact everything. Um, and if you will decide to add another section, it will add that section in all of the child components. Because of the auto layout, it will maintain the distances as well. So that's more or less about components. Um, okay. So Kate is asking, how do you suggest keeping your components organized? Do you put them all in a single page? So definitely I recommend to put them in a single page. That will be your design system page. And then you could use the assets to just drag your components to the main area. And in addition to that, I recommend to use also uh, variants. I don't think I will cover variants today because it's a bit more complicated. This is something that we cover in our Figma master, master class. But basically, uh, you can use different variants if you want to maintain um, um, different versions of the same component or different interactions that are reusable in your prototype. I hope that it makes sense. If it didn't make sense, that's completely fine. It's a bit advanced. We're not going to cover that today. But variance is also something that I use inside of that page where I keep my design system. Um, so, okay, that's... Okay. So let's talk a little bit about text components. So just like in every different um, doc that you use to write, Google Docs or Word, you can use almost the same shortcuts to create the same impact. So let's say that I'm writing something. So I'm writing something. And if you'd like it to be, oh, typo, there you go. Hold on. Let's make it a bit bigger. So let's say that you want it to be bold. So you press Control B or Command B or Control I to make it italic or Control U to underline if you want to make it like as a link or something like that. And in addition to that, you can play around with the alignment. So adjust the alignment to the right, to the left, right here in the text panel. And you can have more advanced stuff like strike through, uh, decoration, um, resizing. Okay. So you could have your own uh, boxes of text. Um, so you can have this box of text, it's that one. Or you can say something like, hey, uh, Hold on, resize it, okay? And then it will maintain your copy. Oh, you... Just like that. So you can uh, use this to resize and to change the size of the text boxes. And is there a shortcut to increase text size? There is, so it's command shift and then a rectangle to the right. Okay, or oh, command shift and rectangle to the left to make it smaller. Uh, Loa is saying FYI, Color Hunter is an insecure website. So I don't know. I use it if it's not secured. I guess that you have a lot of different plugins that you could use. Um, and that's uh, a little bit about that. And before we will move and talk a little bit about our Figma masterclass, I want to go back to mid journey and see uh, the, the, remember that I told this robot to paint a picture for our, for our Figma class. So let's see, let's see what we have here. 
Oh, that's so nice of you, Mr. Robot. So let's put it in our Figma file just for fun. So the robot is giving you a nice uh, meadow. Anyway, so um, I want to talk with you a little bit about our upcoming Figma class. So every month in, uh, hold on, let me grab that link real quick. There you go. So we ran one session uh, of the Figma masterclass and it went really well. Um, we have an, uh, um, me as an instructor and another instructor named Sarah Loige. Um, and uh, the class starts on the 2nd of uh, January. We need to update this. It's on the 2nd of January. And uh, that's more or less about it. We have the Figma uh, masterclass where you're going to learn how to work with different plugins, such as Ditto for copy management or Frontitude for copy management. You're going to learn how to use variants, for example, um, advanced prototyping, advanced design handoff. It's very useful for UX writers that want to get better in um, to get better. In, in using Figma and our attendance for the Figma happy hour get 50% off as well. And, and that's more or less about it. It's live sessions. So it's hands-on live sessions. You're going to get exercises. We're going, we're going to get homework. We're going to learn also how to use FigJam and not only Figma, which is pretty awesome. And, and uh, yeah, we're also going to share the, these recordings with you, by the way, just for you to know. Uh, and that's the link to the Figma uh, masterclass. Can you see, by the way, can you see the link to the, can you see the link, right? The, okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, that's more or less about it. It was a lot of fun to run the first class. We're going to run six of these in 2023. We're going to help Weibo writers with their efforts to be better at content design and to work with designers with uh, and all of that um, which is pretty excited and the value for money here is pretty good uh, in my opinion um, so if you're interested let me know if you have any questions we're going to send you also these links as well in your email um, and uh, that's about it live sessions all recorded you're going to have access to a WhatsApp group where I am going to answer all of your questions that related to Figma. So if, for example, you're in the middle of the night designing and you have a quick question, you can write in the WhatsApp group and I promise to answer not right away if it's the middle of the night for me, but I will answer. And so you get also a person that will help you with every step of the way. Sarah Loire, she is a UX writer and a UX designer combined. She's a unicorn. She's also going to be an instructor with me. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're interested to join, that's the link to our Figma Masterclass. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's about it. Before I leave, I promise I'm not just trying to make your art sale. I'm trying to help. So if you have questions about Figma, now it's the time or the class even. By the way, regardless to the Figma class, uh, yes, I need to change it. It's on the 2nd of January, 2nd of January. Sorry, I forgot to change, to update the dates. That was the first class it started, it ended already. We're going to start a new one in the 2nd of January. Um, and that's uh, about it. And time passed, I know. Um, I see a question by La. what do groups do that frames can't do? So groups maintain and uh, don't maintain uh, layouts and frames do maintain layouts frames are more useful than groups these days and i'm happy that you finally understood auto layouts maria i'm glad the course is not free but it is 50 percent off so uh, it cost 99 bucks that's the point that's the price the, the value for money is pretty good so you get access to a WhatsApp group. I answer all of your questions. You get access to a, a, an instructor, a team, 
of students in a cohort that work with you in every step of the way. You get homeworks, you get feedback on your homework, and uh, you don't get stuck. You get uh, you get advanced in Figma. You accelerate your Figma skills pretty fast. So the course is four weeks. Uh... Oh, oh no. It's 100% off. Oh, I made a mistake, guys. Okay, I need to change that. Oh no. <laughs> so that's a uh, mistake I made. Ah, yes. Okay. Anyway, I so I'm sorry about that. We will uh, we will send you the right link afterwards. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, for the Figma class. Ah. <laughs> okay, guys, I make mistakes too. What can I do? I wanted to give you value in this workshop and I forgot to think about my business. That happens. Sorry about that. And I will make a letter with the correct link. And, and I hope to see you over there. So thank you, everyone. The live class is one hour every week. And that's it. Ciao, everyone. Bye.